Hey everyone, thanks for clicking. This is Rocky, and I want to talk a little bit about the upcoming show, Legends of Tomorrow. So, the Legends of Tomorrow series will premiere in January 2016, around the same time that Arrow and The Flash return from their mid-season breaks, typically around that third week in January. We're still not sure of the exact day of the week the show's going to be on, but my guess is it's probably going to be on a Thursday, so that way we get that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday hit with the CW uh, DC shows. So it will have reduced episodes compared to the other shows. I think they're planning around 13 episodes or so for the whole season. But this is going to allow them to kind of amp up the effects and focus on the story as essentially what they're trying to do is the idea of creating a movie just shown in many parts. Now the talk is that whatever occurs during the mid-season finale of both The Flash and Arrow will directly connect into the premiere of Legends of Tomorrow. Which I think is a brilliant idea as it goes towards building up the small screen cinematic universe. Something that DC has just been killing it lately. Okay, so with the trailer, the main villain will be Vandal Savage, and he's apparently screwing with time somehow. There was a previous story in the Justice League animated series that dealt with a similar situation. In those episodes, Savage managed to send tech to his past self, which resulted in the Nazis winning World War II. So it seems like we're going to get something similar to this with the Legends series, as they'll be traveling to different points in time and correcting things that have been messed up. That is at least the general idea up to this point. Alright, so let's talk about the characters that will make up the Legends of Tomorrow. Arthur Darvill will be portraying Rip Hunter, and as a time traveler, he will be the team's guide more or less. He will lay down all the rules and perils of time travel, which our team is certain to break at many times, right? So who is Rip Hunter? In the comics, he's associated with the Time Masters as well as the Linear Men. As stated in the Flash season finale, he did invent the Time Sphere. In the comics, his character always seemed to be more of like a time-traveling pirate in my eyes. And I think that's kind of the idea and the personality that Darville's going to kind of try and put across on screen. A big reveal in the comics is that he was actually the son of the time-traveling hero Booster Gold. Though at times, Rip Hunter was used more or less as a plot device in the comics as opposed to an actual character. And this is something that can easily happen with any form of time travel. While being an important part of the show, I'm not sure if we're going to see Rip Hunter in every episode, as I think he may appear and then disappear and come back kind of thing. So I don't think we'll see him through like an entire episode, except for maybe the first couple. But we'll just have to wait and see how they play it out from there. We will be seeing a whole lot of Ray Palmer, as originally the spinoff was supposed to be all about Adam, and now we have an ensemble cast. So he is probably going to be more or less the leader of the team, which will allow for some very comical moments, especially with Captain Cold, I think. Last we saw Ray, he was playing with his suit and blew up some upper floors of Palmer Tech at the end of the Arrow Season 3 finale. Per the trailer for Legends, it seems this resulted in him being able to shrink. So yes, finally we will get to see Adam shrink in size. Now as this is probably a costly effect, we may not see it in every episode. I am hoping that this show will bring out more of Ray's heroic side, as he honestly tended to blend in the background on Arrow. Plus, makes me wonder if he's going to go after Sarah. I mean, he does have a thing for blondes, right? Speaking of Sarah, wow, this casting was definitely the most talked about when they released Katie Lotz's name associated with the Legends show. Some thought she would be Sarah, and others thought she would end up being some alternate universe character. Luckily, we get Sarah back by way of the Lazarus Pit. We just have no idea when this actually occurs, and what effects she's going to be dealing with on the show. Remember, Thea had some memory issues for a short time, and she was not completely dead. I am hoping we will see a lot more of the psychological effects this time around. Going with White Canary is an interesting move as this will be a different character than the White Canary in the comics. I can see Sarah butting heads with a lot of the other characters, so that's definitely going to be pretty fun. Though it has me wondering if anyone other than the Legends, Barry, and Oliver will know that she's alive again. I'm hoping everyone will know as Arrow Season 3 had way too much family drama and I do not need a repeat of that. I could almost see her as the leader of the team, just due to the amount of practical combat experience she has, but they'll probably represent this with her having confrontations with Rey. One of the new characters we're going to see is Hawkgirl. Now this is the Kendra Saunders version of the character, instead of the more commonly known Shaira that was depicted in the Justice League animated series. 
Kendra makes a brief cameo during the black hole scene of The Flash's season finale, so I'm guessing she'll actually get her full introduction during season 2 of The Flash, and then carry over into Legends of Tomorrow. Now, sadly in the comics, Kendra became Hawkgirl after committing suicide, which allowed the spirit of Shira to take over her body as she was a descendant. Though her spirit actually believed she was Kendra for a time as she retained her memories, but also all the other past life memories. I doubt they will go this route with this show and instead I think some spirit or entity from an alternate universe will come through the black hole and attach itself to her. Then again, Dr. Stein does make reference to her having past lives, so who knows. Hawkgirl is an amazing warrior and granted some very powerful abilities by way of the nth metal and her wings. I imagine the wings will be tech based, but I'm up in the air if it will actually be nth metal or something created by Cisco. She's going to be another strong female character and I think that's going to be great for the show and definitely great for the Flareoverse. Alright, enough about heroes, let's talk about one of the oddest members of Legends, Captain Cold. Even he can't believe he would be on this team, so why should the viewers? Well, despite his illegal activities, Captain Cold has always shown his own form of morals as well as honor. So in some way, he's going to serve a purpose that the Legends are going to need. That being said, he is completely capable of betraying people if he needs to. Since we don't see his sister with him, it makes me wonder if something's going to happen to her that's going to prompt him to sign up with the team. No matter what, I definitely see him jumping sides at some point. Then we have the wild card, or should I say wildfire member of the team, in the form of Heatwave, the not so friendly partner of Captain Cold. The only way I can imagine Mick being on the team is if there's some sort of promise of an immense payoff. He is a hothead, but more than that, he is completely filled with greed, so will work for a huge amount of money or something that's going to give him some amount of payoff. So are we talking a diamond mine, the queen's jewels, or what? I don't really see him getting along with any of the other legends, not even Colt. He will definitely screw the team at some point and try running away with a fortune. I definitely think that Hunter's going to be keeping a close eye on him. The last addition of the team we see is Martin Stein, who aside from being a genius physicist, is also half of the Firestorm Matrix. But we don't see Ronnie at all. And as far as we know, Robbie Amell has not been casted on the show. At first, I was thinking that Stein would end up being the brain of the team and basically be used to kind of explain things to us, the viewers. Though that's kind of out of the window at this point as we do see Firestorm in action in the trailer. So can Stein become Firestorm without Ronnie? Will Ronnie end up on the show? We are supposed to get at least a partial answer to this early on in season two of The Flash. I can see him being the very blunt voice of reason on the show, which should make for some brilliant comedic moments. Now we do also have the Jay Jackson character announced that's supposed to be a member of the team, but who is he exactly? About the only information we have is that he was a former athlete in high school whose career was stopped due to an injury and now works as a mechanic. Some of the first rumors were that he was going to end up being Cyborg, but I doubt this due to Cyborg being introduced soon in the DC movie universe, and they're not too keen on sharing characters with the small screen universe. There are many other rumors as well, but the one I think is the strongest is that he will end up being the new body of Firestorm. As in the comics, there were multiple people that either merged or became Firestorm independently. Plus, just imagine all the fun back and forth we would get with the shared mind of Firestorm. So keep an eye out for Jay being introduced in either Arrow or The Flash next season. Alright, time to talk about the big villain of the show, or at least the one that's been mentioned so far, Vandal Savage. At this time, we haven't heard many casting rumors for this part, so it's possible we may not actually see him during the first season. Personally, I would love to see Tom Welling take on the role, as he's a great actor, and considering Dean Cain played the part on an episode of Smallville, it would be kind of a poetic move, I think. Now, depending on which story you read, Savage is anywhere from 35,000 to 50,000 years old. He was a caveman that was imbued by energy from a fallen meteorite that granted him eternal youth, increased intelligence, strength, reflexes, and above all else, immortality. Now he can still die, but he pretty much instantly comes back and is healed. So not sure what level of these abilities we will see on the show. Due to his extended lifespan, he is a master of war and finances, as well as exceedingly patient. 
he tends to keep himself in the shadows as he positions his various minions to do his dirty work. So what I imagine we're going to be seeing is Savage is going to be sending various agents to specific points in time where they will be gathering items, technology, or taking out people that are going to affect his grand plan. At least that's kind of what I'm hoping for, but right now we just don't know. Either way, he is a great villain, and I'm glad to see him brought into the Flareverse, as his actions could affect everyone. Alright guys, those are some of my thoughts on the Legends of Tomorrow series. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below if you guys are excited for this series and going to be checking it out. Or if you have any questions on any of these characters or anything to do with the show, go ahead and put those down in the comments below as well. If you've enjoyed the video, definitely pound that like button and go ahead and subscribe to my channel. That way you can receive an alert when I post my next video. To subscribe to my channel if you're on your computer, go and click the subscribe annotation on the screen. Or if you're on a mobile device, there's a subscribe button down in the description. As well as I will provide a direct link for subscribing down in the description below as well. Again, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. And going to kind of close out things a little bit differently at the request of my kids. We're closing this out with a great old hoax smash. Alright guys, talk to you soon now. Bye.